What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at Arcaland. This is a gold box inspired open world RPG that's made by a guy called David B. Val, as far as I can tell. Uh, Four Dimension Games is the one putting this one on out. And it's an open world RPG from, as far as I can tell, a developer that has kind of a cult following on the RPG Codex forums. That's about it. We're going to dive on in today for about 30 minutes and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or pass on. This game is currently in early access. You can check out all the info down below in the description. And then, of course, on top of that, you can find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream in case you wanted to hang out live. Time is a-wasting, so let's go ahead and get on in here. So it looks like the first thing we got to do is we've got to make four heroes. I'm going to take you through the creation of one hero so that you know what it looks like, and then I'll mash out the others off camera so that we can get into the game a little bit faster. So let's go with number one. Uh, it looks like we've got a number. What does requisites not met mean for the cur Oh, there's like different backgrounds too. Gotcha. All right. Well, our first character, a minotaur. Dude, games never let me play as a minotaur. I'm amped about this. After orcs. And after dwarves, I, I think minotaurs are probably my third favorite. I'm going to be this minotaur over here. Are there lady tars too? There's lady tars too. There you go. So you can be a, you can be a lady minotaur, if, a minotaurus, if you want. It looks like we do get a number of stats and penalties and things like that from playing around with this character. We can't wear boots, shoes, or helmets. Gotcha. They also eat twice as, twice as much food. But it looks like we're going to be a lot stronger than everybody else. So hopefully that works out okay. I think I'm gonna make him a bodyguard, so it looks like in this menu right here, we're picking a bunch of backgrounds that are gonna determine how we perform in various ways. So you can see right here, we're getting level ups on our one-handed weapons, on our two-handed weapons, stuff like that. I'm probably gonna have the bodyguard go like sword and board with like a big minotaur tower shield to protect the rest of the party while they're casting, shooting arrows, stuff like that. Uh, it looks like over here, we've got ourselves a stat allocation that we can play around with. So we have a total strength of six right now. I think we probably want to bump that up a little bit, and that looks like it's affecting a lot of our melee stats right there. The other thing I figured we'd probably want to look into is a little bit of endurance. Whatever gives him a lot more health points is something that I'm kind of interested in. It looks like, actually, he's lining up to be a juggernaut of a two-handed fighter. All of his other stats are kind of falling backwards, but I do like how it automatically adjusts as you're putting the points in. All right, that looks like a good stat display for me because dexterity gives you AP in combat. So you want it's divided by two. So we were on a three. So putting one point in there gave him an extra AP that he could play around with in combat. Hopefully it works out okay. Skillses. I guess I'll make him a little bit diplomatic. Although I guess for RP purposes, human insight might be better for a bodyguard. I can't put points into any of the other stuff because I guess I don't have the requisite stats. So we'll just go ahead with that. And that's what character creation looks like. Okay, so after like 10 minutes of making characters, this is actually a fairly complex character creation system, which is nice. Your backstory really determines the skills and the things you can actually do. Things are flatly grayed out on your character sheet unless you are specifically a burglar or specifically a wizard. I kind of dig that. It implies that there was an education that went into your character. Uh, let's go ahead and start off the game. We'll play it on old school mode and... Let's start the timer. Adventurers makes a solemn decision to travel across the sea of Andor and seek fortune in a land of peril and wonder. A land both new and ancient, civilized yet savage. A land called Arklond. Legends say for millennia, the glorious empire united all men under the same banner. But all its might and splendor turned to dust and ruin when a magical cataclysm brought the horrors into the world. The survivors fled to the island of Varanar and proclaimed the exiled kingdoms. For generations, the continent of Andoria and the old empire had been feared and avoided, but not anymore. A century ago, brave explorers dared to return to Andoria and found the horrors had vanished. Thus, humanity slowly began to reclaim its ancient homeland. Colonists, adventurers, pilgrims, second sons, and 
many others flock to the new land, ship after ship. The ruins of Arklund still hide many mysteries and treasures, but also abominations from a lost age. You embark on the Silver Star and prepare yourselves to leave the exiled kingdoms. The trip is long, but it does not dull your thirst for adventure. During the journey, you befriend a sage from the great library of New Garand, Lawmaster Hurazan. His magnificent tales about the ancient empire make you daydream about flying castles, magic artifacts, and epic heroes of old. You wonder how much of it still remains in Argolund. Finally, land is in sight. You expected Argolund to be beautiful, otherworldly, but the huge rock raising over the stormy waves looks mundane enough, somber, and menacing. A pale green light suddenly flashes from the top, sending chills down your spine. Captain Garen is unfazed by the accursed rock or the storm. Yes, the Devil's Horn is an evil, haunted place, but the star will just sail around it and dock at Port Gallop before nightfall. You feel relieved by his assurance, but not for long. from the armed ship. Crew and passengers of the Silver Star, all we want is a man called Harazan. Hand him over, and you can sail away safely. You have my word. Many crew members curse the pirates and vow to fight to the death, but Harazan does not falter. He's determined to go willingly and avoid any bloodshed. The old man rose towards the bloody crew, undaunted. The captain quickly orders to turn the ship around and leave before the Corsairs change their mind. But of course, they never intended to let you go. You wake up, coughing up salt water, unarmed and almost naked. You examine your surroundings. Over you looms the ominous Devil's Horn, but you know somewhere past it lies the town of Port Caleb, your salvation. How is it that in all these RPG intros, I always wake up with my pants off, man? Like, why is that always a detail of this experience? Like, how many RPGs do I play where I wake up with my butt cheeks just dangling in the breeze, dude? All right, so here we are in Arklond, which of course, in the intro of this video, I mispronounced because I had never heard the word before. So, you know, that's gonna be, I'm gonna go back and edit that, all right? Or maybe I'll forget. I don't know, something's gonna happen though. Oh, I can run too? Nice. Well, it looks like we're hanging out in first person view right now. There's, I guess, a club right there, which is cool. Are there any more clubs around here anywhere? Or like planks or anything I can use sort of as a bludgeon? Because what I know about these RPGs, right? What I know about these kinds of RPGs is that there's oftentimes going to be a lot of bludgeoning and murdering. So, like, let's go ahead and we'll just get him equipped up real fast. So at least the big guy has something they can hit. I'm just hide behind the Minotaur, man. That's my plan. Oh, good. There's slinking things up ahead. So we've got interaction mode right here. So it's got kind of the same thing that EVE Online has where you've got, like, a selectivity mode and, like, a piloting mode. So in our cast of characters, I have our Minotaur. He's basically the bodyguard slash tank. I've also got a ranger in there. I've got myself a wizard, I guess, or like an apprentice is what they called him. But apparently he's got rune magic knowledge or something. And then we've got our goblin rogue extraordinaire. A group of small fish-like creatures is busily searching for crabs under the sand and rocks. You've heard of Norax being a threat in the Arcalan coast, but nothing you can't handle still. Your tender flesh is unprotected from their sharp teeth, so you should be careful. It looks like I could take a look at this wreckage over here and interact with it, too. We succeeded! Nice! You find a large iron nail that can be used as a knife. Using this new tool, you work on the intact wooden board and turn it into an improvised- Nice, dude! Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Now I feel a little bit better about this situation. We were a little tiny bit low on, on things to hit enemies in the face with up until just like a second ago. So, like, let's give the rogue... A knife right there. There we go. All right, so now we're looking good. 
Let's go ahead and save our game, because that is the hallmark of all RPG gameplay, is just being a filthy save scummer, because why not? The only game that was an RPG with like dice rolls and things that I never save scummed was Disco Elysium. But that was because Disco Elysium made it so- Eight damage? Jesus, slow down. We're a little bug creature? Damn, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Tutorials, tutorials, tutorials. Eight AP to move over there. He's got nine AP right now, plus three. So I guess we move him over to here, and can I just like stab this guy? There we go, let him feel it. Let him feel the sting of our icy blows. That's what I'm talking about, dude. If you're not out here on the beach at Sandals, throwing down with an improvised rusty shank, you obviously don't know how to vacation properly. All right, let's move over to this side. We're gonna focus fire on this nerd right here. He's flanked, but unfortunately, we missed. Uh, so there's not much that I can do there. Animation's a little bit primitive at the moment, but everything seems to work. He started out with Stunning Blow, which is great. Is it the case that you can only attack once? It appears to be the case that he could only attack once. He might have been able to do it twice. I don't know how much this guy just cost me. I'll have to take a look. And then I just got a guy with fists over here, so I don't know how helpful that's going to be, but he does have healing magic, but I need to be in touch distance to use it. There we go. Get that HP back, dude. Knit up those wounds. So I guess there's a combat. There's kind of a little bit of depth to the combat here where if you strike an enemy and you hit them, from what I can tell, you see those little arrows right there? Those are flanking spots. And what that means is anybody that attacks from any of those four directions, this creature is distracted because he was just struck from this direction. So it's almost like a more complex version. So in... If you've played War Tales, when you hit an enemy, you become linked with them. You are considered occupying one another. And so they can't attack anybody but you. They have to focus on your attacks and your blows. In this game, they've taken that to the next step, where after you take a hit, you are now open from those other directions, and so there's a chance you'll get critted on. Let's go to right here, I guess. Missed with the 50. That's unfortunate. Missed with the 50. Hit with the 50. You love to see it. All right. Who's up next? Big dog? All right, man. Big dog. I need you to take care of this for me, my dude. With the 60% hit chance, big dog. How could you? All right. So I need to get a healer into position to help out Scruntly. Scruntly's back up. He's got a flank, but he missed it. Flank, but he hit it. That's what I love to see. And then let's... Is there a tax of opportunity? There are. Okay, I wanted to make sure. We have verified that there are indeed areas of control and attacks of opportunity if you don't know what those are. It's exactly what I just talked about with War Tales gameplay. When you're attacked or having been attacked by an enemy, you are considered intrinsically linked with one another unless someone disengages the fight and takes an attack of opportunity, which represents, you know, that guy lashing out at you while you're leaving yourself exposed. Does his WP come back, or am I wasting, like, all of his willpower right now to heal up wounds that don't need to be healed? I don't know. Get over here. Good hit, good hit. Oh, he missed a 95, dude. A 95, though, dude. Foof. That's hurtful. You hate to see it, dude. It's funny when it happens to everybody but you. It's like getting kicked in the nuts. All right, we'll go over here. See if we can bash this thing up. These things are a little bit more cranky than I figured they'd be, though. This character does have another attack. I thought. Oh, it's a support spell. Never mind. I remember what I took now. Holy sustenance. You have to feed your characters in this game. Like, it's like D&D. You actually have to have rations and things around. Although, I don't think I've ever played a single D&D campaign that used rations and food. Nobody ever wants to do it. Everybody says it's tedious. I like it, though. I like those little survival aspects. It shimmers for a rainbow of colors in the sunlight. Traders will offer a fair price for the scales. Cool. I've always had, like, this bad luck in life where I've played D&D &D for most of my adult life, but I don't think I've ever had a group that truly matched up with the way that I prefer and like to play the game. It's always been, you know, a bunch of people that are trying to get disparate stuff out of the same table. And so you got to make concessions, otherwise the game falls over and dies. Looks like we got something laying around over here. Looks like our HP, and it also looks like our WP do not come back. What's that right there? Oh, nice, dude. Travel supplies. So we got some food. We got lockpicks. We got some torches. Okay. 
What? Oh, a bow. Nice, dude. I need that for my ranger. My ranger was kind of like a useless mook in that last fight. Oh, that's right. You got to put it in the backpack first, then you got to put it over here. For whatever reason, you can't equip stuff directly from your party menu. You got to, like, put it in the backpack physically first, then put it in over there. What are these? Reinforced boots? I guess the only person that can use them is the rogue. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Different people have different levels of armor training from what I can see. So you would think, I mean, he's disabled probably because of that's what it is. Okay, I figured it out. You need one in armor training in order to wear it. Because he's got one, got minus one, he's got zero, and he can't wear shoes. So, that explains the that explains the issue here of why the boots would not be equipped by anybody. Got it. Very, very silky smooth when it comes to the movement and the navigation. Would have been nice to see, like, footprints in the sand or the sound of footsteps, but I know that some people are really polarized about footstep sounds in video games. I tend to prefer them because it makes it a little bit more immersive. But in the case of this game, they do have a lot of ambient sound and things rattling around. So I don't feel like it's weirdly, strangely, awkwardly silent right now. Ooh, a shield. Hell yeah, there we go. I mean, it might just be, you know, the lid of a barrel, but in a life or death situation like our survivors are in right now, it's the stuff. I actually kind of can't believe that one guy made this. Like, I dug around for like an hour and a half, and I couldn't find a website with like a list of staff or anything else. And every single place I went, there was a guy named David just talking about making this game. Nobody else. Just David. But I only looked around for like an hour, and I was, always, I was also kind of like halfway listening to something on Netflix, too. So I may have missed. There may be more than one developer here. But only the David B. Val guy has been speaking for the game, so I have to assume that this is just a project made by one dude. And it seems pretty rad so far. Like, I really, really dig the character creation. It makes sense why he's got a cult following, because this is obviously lo-fi. Like, this is one of those games that is not going to have the best graphics. It's not going to have, you know, the best of everything. But the stuff that matters feels like it's in the right place. And we've only been playing for, like, ten minutes or so, and I still get that vibe of sort of old school RPGs, which is good. That's a vibe that I think a lot of people spend trying to chase down effectively and never quite getting to because those old gold box games from the early days, they're very distinct. They're a product of a different time. I talked about this when we were... I thought there was something sticking out of his head for a second. We talked about this when we were playing Wizardum, where you can just take a look at the art styles and how things have changed. Uh, since the 80s, when I was a kid, fantasy art looked very different from how it looks now. You don't really see that that old Frazetta style anymore, which was one of the things that I thought was really cool about Wizardum is that they broke out Dennis Lubay, who's like one of the kings of like the gold box era artwork. And it just felt so good to see somebody making that art again. You love to see it. So it looks like I can fire like wherever. Hey, you hit him, though. It costs 5 AP to shoot a bow, which is kind of a bummer. Oh, you can also defend, too. Oh, and look at that, dude. You've got, like, a little tick right here. You go tick, 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 and you can put in extra AP on your attack, XCOM style, to guarantee you a hit. I'm going to swing him out a little bit wider over here with the rogue. Let's get in there. I would love to kill that big one right there before it gets a chance to do anything. That's kind of sort of where I'm at, is that I want the big one to die before anything else goes wrong. I forgot to put the shield on this dude, too. I should have done that. 72% flank. That HP meter is close, but we just couldn't seal the deal. Big miss. Ooh, eight damage right there. It'll go, It's okay. It'll buff out, dude. It's just a scratch. It's not that important. Uh, I'm fine with, like, I don't really need the tutorials, I don't think. Yeah, you might as well throw some AP at it to guarantee hits here. Because we need the big dog down, like, right now. Like, there's just no way around it. There we go. All right, big guy's down. We'll probably move up to here, maybe? 
We're going to have to see how the hits land, though. I do like that the enemy have teeth, and I don't mean that in like a funny, funny, haha -ha pun way. I do like that straight from the beginning of the game, these enemies feel like a threat to me anyways. Like, they definitely feel like a problem. Who am I trying to attack here? You? All right, give them the bonk. Perfect. Big bonk right there. I guess there's no point in me conserving my AP now that I think about it. Oh, I should have spent the AP. Damn it. Why did I just click so fast? Me, big dumb. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All of our luck is coming home to roost right now. Okay, come over here. That's fine. Take the reaction hit. That's cool. Heal him right there. Looks like we can cast in combat without getting attacks of opportunity, which is great. Big hit right there. Took a big hit back, though. Let's boost that up. Get him. There it is. The 64 right there. Just swing wildly and hope for the best, man. Ooh, if he wants the wizard, he wants him bad. Go ahead and heal him up one more time. That's going to be the last of our WP, I think. Oh, he can't spend extra AP. All right. Missed with the stunning blow. That sucks, dude. These misses are eating us alive right now. Like, these back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back misses are eating us. We're really struggling at the moment to get out of, like, the doldrums of this combat. Luck's got to turn around at some point, though. There it is. That's okay. You can chew the wizard a little bit. He can take it. You've got enough to heal yourself? Oh, nice, dude. Heal yourself, then. Yeah, just keep laying your, your nude healing hands on everybody, man. I believe in you. I wonder why he's not allowed... I wonder why he's not allowed to increase his accuracy. Maybe that's like a specifically like a ranger thing. I don't know. Hey, there it is. So everybody got 58 XP. Looks good. I'm a little bit weird about the... I don't know if you noticed when we were fighting, but I'm a little bit weird about the Minotaur. Kind of looks like he's in a falling animation or something. Like he's not in contact with the ground. The combat's working fine. It actually kind of reminds me of the Bard's Tale. We got an 88% chance. We rolled a 90. We rolled a 100. Okay, fair enough. A little ugly, not super happy with that outcome, but with an 88% chance to succeed, we missed it twice. There's 12% chance to fail on both. That was a 1 in 144 chance that that would happen. Sub 1%. And that was after we missed a 95 in the last combat, too. Hurtful, right? Hurtful. Now let's go ahead and camp here for a second. We will spend... We can forage and hunt. We can spend supplies. The party rests for six hours, spends no supplies. Health and willpower recover 50%. Or we can spend five supplies right now. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I like the day and night cycle, too. That's really nice. Okay, let's go down to the equipment menu and let's get all these goodies slapped on real fast. We've got rusty armor. Uh, we can put that on you right this second. So go ahead and put on the rusty armor. We also have a rusty longsword. That's an actual weapon, so go ahead and equip that right there. We've also got an actual honest-to-God shield right there, too. Looks good. Journal on that side. We've got a real dagger on that side, too. Can you dual-wield daggers? Is that a thing you can do? Doesn't look like it just yet, so we'll swap out. What does that one do? One to three. That does one to four. Okay, I'll take the extra plus one damage then. What was the difference between his sword and that club? Two to four, two to six. So a two top end increase. I'll take it. I like the lighting effects. It's a good looking game now that they've got the lighting effects thrown around too. Huh. Cool, man. Let's continue walking down the beach here and see if we can find our way out of this precarious situation. Keep an eye out for any kind of node or any kind of thing we can interact with, too. Further on down the road, we got ourselves some palm trees, like some banana trees over here. Is any of this harvestable? This kind of feels like the kind of game where there's going to be nooks and crannies with little lootable objects inside. Are those mud crabs? Okay, let's fight the mud crabs then, dude. 
Ain't nothing wrong with getting a little bit of free mud crab XP. Damn, they closed on my wizard with a quickness. They didn't even hesitate. You gotta get out of there, though. That's fine. Take your hit and get out. It's all good. Next up. Rogue, get yourself in there. Land a hit on him, please. That's all I need is for you to land a hit on him so that I can hit him from the flank. Uh, we can do big accuracy right here. Gonna go for it. Critical hit right there. Love to see it. 80% chance to hit on that side. Give him the bonk. These, these things actually have considerably more HP than mobs we were fighting previously. Sort of interested in how armor works in this game, too. A little bit curious about that. Uh, go ahead and heal yourself real fast. Light him up. Okay, yeah. Fair. Not exactly the quality of light him up that I was hoping for, but light him up it was. Now that you're done right there, pull back for a second. You only have seven right there. Oh, we need a blunt object in order to use stunning blow. Gotcha. Only three damage right there. We also have melee overwatch, which is kind of cool. I just saw that on the ability bar. You can melee overwatch and attack anything that steps into the area you're in. Go ahead and get in behind him. See if you can turn him around a little bit. Yeah, give the Minotaur a little bit more of a chance to hit right there. One damage. I'm going to need I'm gonna need something a little bit better than that. There we go. See, trust the Minotaur, dude. All right, get in there and maybe patch him up ever so slightly before the combat ends. As long as he can keep... I like the role, the rogue, I like the role that the rogue is playing right now where he doesn't hit for very much, but he can spam attacks until he gets a hit just to light the enemy up for a flank. That's sort of like one of those little things where I'm sure plenty of people playing as the rogue in this will be like, I'm not dealing any damage right now, but you are setting the enemy up to get smacked. Like, the rogue being where he was was the reason why my Minotaur was able to bang on him so hard. What do we have over here? Got that right there. It's kind of getting a little dark, ain't it? How far out in the water can I go? Oh, you can actually go in the water proper. Oh. All right, word to the wise, don't go out in the water. Uh, so there's not enough slopes for you to get back up and out in the game as a drowning system. And there's, like, nowhere for you to get back up from. So if you fall in the water out there, you just drown pretty much. That's more or less it. Don't do it. I tried to, I walked all the way around and I found a glitch spot over there that I could stand on to get my breath back, but it wasn't enough breath to make it to this little ramp over on this side. So my advice to you would be just do not go in the water. Uh, that's a mistake. I'm sure there's something out there that the game wants me to find or wants me to have. There's probably secrets and things out there. Why else would they have like a submersion system? But I'm not brave enough and I hate drowning slowly by increments of one HP. So I'm not going to push it too hard. I hope we run into a resting spot pretty soon because it's getting kind of... Oh, dude, there's a dungeon over there. We got to go through the dungeon, don't we, to get to the other side and get to Galeb's Bluff or whatever the name of that town was? I bet you that's what we're going to have to do. Is there anything over there? Like, do I have to fight these guys? The only reason I would fight these guys is if there was, like, lootable containers over on this side. But if there's no lootable containers... I legitimately don't care about fighting that group of random sea lizard dog things. There is a chest. It needs a specific key. Okay. And there's the specific key. I like that my character, that I put a bunch of points into scouting, he's able to see the key and light it on up. That's a really great, awesome detail. Now we've got some scrolls, we've got some robes, we've got what looks like a chem light and a potion. Sounds good. All of that stuff seems like it will have utility in the future. Let's go ahead and gird the loins of yet another character right there. Gives him plus five to meditation. I don't know exactly what that means, but hey, we got plus five to meditation. We also have a scroll. I don't know if he can actually use that scroll, though, because it seems like different characters have different skills for reading scrolls and things. So... I put all of his points into diplomacy so that he would be kind of our talky guy because he had a little bit more per he has a little bit more personality than everybody else. But there are a bunch of different magic schools and things you can play around with, and I think the schools probably dictate what you can and cannot cast. 
Oh, it's going to be like that, is it? I see that chest over there. I'm going for it. Oh, it wasn't a chest. It was just a bunch of little herb thingies. Okay. I don't have anybody... I don't have anybody that does herbalism or alchemy. I saw the skill, but there was others. I was trying to, like, hyper-focus, I guess. I didn't like spreading my points all over the place. It made me feel nervous. All right, set my heading over here. Sprint across. Go for it. No drowning. No drowning allowed. Nobody's going to drown. All right, what was that other thing that I picked up? I picked up a rotten leather helmet. Can he wear it? It looks like he actually can. So they said we weren't going to be able to wear a lot of helmets, but it looks like we got that one. What's the difference between the long sword and the short sword? Is one to five? Okay. Can I give him, like, a offhand weapon? Because, like, a ranger, he's still got decent fighting skills. He's the best at the bow, but he's still okay with one-handed weapons. So is it possible to, like, weapon swap in combat? Just in case they close the gap with him or whatever? I don't know. I'll give him a healing. Actually, I'll probably put the healing potion on the Minotaur. I'm pretty impressed with this so far. The graphics are not great. The environmental design is good, but the character graphics and animations are definitely utilitarian. But I've seen enough indicators just in this opening 30 minutes that this is a game that someone cared about. Little things like characters spotting the key and it glowing ever so slightly. The game is quietly making dice checks and stuff for your character's proficiencies while you're playing and just not telling you. And I like the fact that if we swam out there, there's little islands that have chests on them. Like, they did, they had every opportunity to leave this a linear tutorial area that was entirely forgettable. And instead, what they ended up doing was... Uh, they created a bunch of little nooks and crannies that the player could explore and have a good time with. That's a good sign. You see a gate on the side of the cliff. It may be the only way out of the coast, but maybe we should explore the beach thoroughly for anything that might be useful. Yeah, I'm kind of like looking around, but it's getting a little dark. I had hoped that if I put a torch on him, it would give you a light radius, but it unfortunately didn't work that way. This is what happens when you don't have any characters that have the light spell. Just pick up a rock and cast light on it. Bummer. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were looking at the early access for Arkland. I like it. I like it. This is definitely one of those Bard's Tale style games that I would totally play. I don't mind the graphics are a little bit simpler on the character end. It seems like the character creation, the RPG mechanics, and the D&D inspired stuff is going pretty well so far. Like, I've been pretty happy with the way that it's panned out. And so... Check the game out. It's in early access right now for $20. It's a one-man project. This is like the definition of indie. Uh, this is a guy who's been making games now for a while by himself. And it's actually apparent now how he developed such a cult following. So I'm impressed. I want to play more. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games so that you don't have to. This is Arklond. I'll see y'all later, folks.